Ken Suzuki, welcome to the show. Hello. So uh, you're a realtor and uh, you're the director of Higher Ground. Um, perhaps if you can uh, give us a little bit of background on your, um, your, your career to date and also a little bit of information about your company. Okay. Um, so I was uh, working at an insurance company for nine years after I graduated um, college. Yeah. And when I was working there, I wanted to live pretty close to my office where I worked. So I thought of buying a place. It was a very small apartment, like 25 square meters yep. and maybe 10 million yen. So not a fancy one, but I bought that and I renovated that maybe um, paying like 3 million yen. Mm -hmm. So a very compact, small place I bought for myself. And that was the first time I was involved in real estate. And I thought that was pretty fun. So mm. I kept buying um, using loan because the company I was uh, working at was a fairly stable company. So it was pretty easy to get um, home loan. So I bought several others and I bought a small building, a very small building, like 13 units. Yep. And when I was 31, I thought I wanted to now do it myself as a real estate agent. So I started Higher Ground. That was yeah. 14 years ago. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, and just out of interest, the, uh, the first apartment you bought, uh, you, uh -huh. sort of, you, you bought that for 10 million, uh, spent another three on renovations. Uh, do you still own it or did you sell it? And if you sold it, uh, how much did you make back? Okay. I still own it. You still own it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I think if I sell right now, it's close to 20 million, I think, yeah, because yeah. the price has risen. It's a very, it was also, um, at that point it was already maybe 30 years old when I bought it. Right. So it's very old now, but because Tokyo real estate market is slowly um, always going up. So it's still a bit high. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And how old were you when you uh, made that first purchase? Um, I was 26. 26. Yeah. And would you say in Japan, that's relatively young to buy uh, your first property? Yes. Um, I think so. Um, yeah. Most of the people start um, buying when they get married or mm. when they have those um, changes in life. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess coming from Australia, especially when I grew up, basically, uh, you know, you finish high school, go to university. As soon as you start working, you almost, there's this pressure to, to buy your first house. There's this oh, really? real sort of, um, yeah, property buying culture in Australia. Um, from, from what you've said, that doesn't really exist in, in Japan. Um, no. Do you think that that's a reflection of the the, the cost of buying property compared to income levels at that age? Or do you think it's that Japanese people are perhaps a little um, more sort of risk adverse and don't want yeah. to borrow the, the money necessary? Yeah. In Japan, yeah. like even my parents, they don't think um, having a debt, like a home loan is a good thing. So yeah, when I first bought, it was, I wanted to, I had to convince my parents a little bit, even if, the loan is only under my name. Yeah. I wanted my parents to be, you know, kind of um, on my side. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's the mentality the Japanese people have. Like, loan is not good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is interesting because, you know, the, the, the uh, interest rates here being so cheap, it, uh, it, it's actually, you know, um, it's one of the best places in the world to, uh, mm -hmm. to, to borrow money. Yeah. Um, the company that you have at the moment, uh, how many employees do you have now? Um, um, right now, we're reaching 30 um, staff, wow. um, sales, eight to nine um, staff. And then one, um, what, what do I say? A unique thing is the salespeople only do sales. And we have an internet um, website. And 10 of our staff only does that to... Uh, what to say? Um, gather clients through internet. Mm. Yeah. And then, Interesting. Yeah. Other than that, we have a management team for rental, and yep. then we started a reform team. We have two staff and then one coming next month. Right. So just specializing yeah. in in reform. Reform. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and is your operation um, primarily residential, or do you do commercial property as well? Um, yeah, most of our clients start from um, 
when they want to buy a house they want to live in so it's residential yep so yeah 95 percent residential properties yeah yeah mm. and uh and and you handle both uh, selling and buying a property but also renting and uh um mm-hmm. and, and, and that as well yeah yes yeah. we do yeah. okay mm. um and i guess what we want to talk about today is uh some of the uh, the differences between the real estate system in japan compared to other countries and i guess this is targeted more at uh probably longer term uh, foreign residents who um mm. are perhaps thinking about buying property here um Mm-hmm. I guess uh, we can probably do a separate show uh, at another time on, on renting, but uh, yeah, I sort of wanted to get your your take on what those main differences um, between the uh, yeah the, the real estate scene in Japan compared to other places. Do um, you mean for foreigners or Japanese people? Um, I guess both. I mean, if uh, if so, well, I guess yeah, more so for foreign people. If um, if someone was coming from let's say Australia, um, what what are and, and they were maybe living here for uh, the the middle to long term, um, and felt that perhaps owning property here would be mm-hmm. um, more cost effective than renting. Um, mm-hmm. What are some of the main things that uh, that person should know okay. in relation to buying property here? Mm-hmm. So the the biggest hurdle that the most difficult part is lo- getting a loan. So if that mm. um, person has cash to buy, um, there'll be no problem. And I will definitely say um, to purchase a property will be better than renting a property um, if it's a place easy to be rented out in the future. I think it, w- it will be better to buy. Um, but most people don't buy in cash. Even if they had cash, they would like to borrow money because in Japan the interest rate is very low but um, if they have PR permanent resident or in some banks if they have a Japanese um, spouse Mm. it's fairly easy um, to borrow money from a Japanese bank but if not um, there'll be only few um, banks they will um, lend money one is Prestia but you need 20% um, cash up front and there's another bank smbc they will help you if you have a long living history in japan or like working at the same company for several years they have very um, specific um, rules but you might have chance using smbc too yeah Mm -hmm. and in regards to the loans if someone does have a pr or does have japanese spouse and and they qualify for Mm -hmm. a loan with several banks have you found um, either with your direct dealings or with the d- dealings of your clients that uh, there's banks, uh, some banks that are better than others uh, to deal with? Um, basically, I think all the banks are now very competitive. Mm. Um, I really think it's better to stick with the mega banks, um, the larger ones. But nowadays, the net banks, um, such as Lactem Bank or, or s- some of those internet banks, the interest rates are very very low maybe lower than the mega banks but i this is a very technical um what to say um subject so i don't want to go into the details but the interest rate if you choose a float floating rate the mega banks have a rule that it every time they rise they make the um, interest rate high they have this 20 percent limit so it does not go over that Mm-hmm. But those internet banks sometimes does not have that um, limit. So when it starts going high, it might go really, really high. Right. And we don't, we, Japan has not had that kind of boom after the internet bank started. So if there's like a bubble, like a real estate bubble, and the rates goes high, we don't know how high it will go. It's sure. very low at this moment. Yeah, yeah. But if you buy the fixed term, uh, fixed rate it's always fixed so yep. you don't need to worry about that yeah yeah mm. okay um and then if someone um uh, say has approval or is likely to to get approval um what are some of the things that they should be considering when looking for a property okay um so yeah as you said it's better to have a pre-approval from the bank before or at the starting point when you start finding an apartment because you won't know how much you'll be able to borrow. And when the timing comes to when you find the very best house, you need to negotiate if you want to lower the price. 
it's better to have approval from the bank so that you can show that you're very serious to buy. So it's good to have that bank approval first. Then um, I think we will go viewing um, many houses. Um, I feel that foreigners tend to like um, houses better than apartments. Um, what I feel is apartments are easy to resell or rent um, compared to houses. Uh, because the structure is reinforced concrete. Right. Um, it will keep on looking good if it's like 50 years old. Um, compared mm -hmm. to that, a house is, in Japan, it's wooden made mostly. Yep. And if you live for like 20 or 30 years, um, sometimes the house might look not so good. But um, if my client was thinking to buy a house, for the next maybe 30 years for a very long term, um, a proper house they would like to actually live and have their children or family, mm. I think a house is a better um, plan. So if, let's say a young Japanese couple came to, um, want to, said they want to buy and they don't have their future plan, I would recommend an apartment because mm. it's easier to change their style. Yeah. But most of the clients I uh, we deal who are foreigners, their mindset is really like they're buying a place they would like to live for long term. That's the reason they are going to not stop renting and buy. So it, houses might be better. Yeah. Also, um, if um, any of your your um, friends or clients has, has never bought a house in Japan. The apartments have management fees and repairment funds. You have to pay monthly to the apartment um, owners association, which is pretty expensive. Maybe 40,000 yen to 50,000 yen, if it's like a 80 square meter house. Um, that um, monthly payment is, will impact your um, life a little bit, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so a house should be good if it's for your family to live for long term. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, and then it's most, uh, if someone's looking at owning a car here, um, most houses here have uh, so car parks built in. Um, whereas if you were to uh, rent a car park in a, an apartment building, again, that's probably another sort of 30 to 50,000. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, and then uh, in terms of so resale, um, is there any advantage uh, to uh, either the apartment or house uh, when it comes to reselling? Okay, so houses, if you really want to resell, um, it's better to resell before the building starts to look old. So yeah. I sold uh, my parents' house um, a couple of years ago. It was made when I was born, so 40. Um, at back then, 43 years ago. Mm. But um, as a real, real estate agent, I tried my best to sell my parents' house. But since the house was old and all the equipment looked very old fashioned, uh, we had to sell at the land price. The building uh, value will be shown zero. And oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Because it's a very old house. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, but. I've seen houses that have been sold higher than the price they bought purchase. Those cases will be um, selling within like 15 years or maybe 20 years. Yep. And it's located in a very nice place Yeah. Uh, in Tokyo. My, my parents' house was in Nerimaku. Okay. It's a little bit in the Inaka of Tokyo. Yeah, sure. Hard sure. to sell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and are there other factors that um, people should look at with either a house or apartment um, in terms of future resale? If, uh, if they're looking to, you know, potentially make money or at least not lose too much money when they sell, what are some other things that they should okay. be talking about? I think um, location is the very um, most important thing we mm. should think of. Um, as I told you, my parents' house was in Nerimaku, not that famous. Um, young people or foreign people would not um, go to Nerimaku to find a house. They will stick sure. most to the central side. Yeah. So always buy a house um, where location is good, or even if it's located in a like a local railroad, rate on train, um, the 
walking distance from that station, I think would be better for, if for house within 12 to 30 minutes. Uh, for apartment, maybe better within 12 or 10 to 12 minutes mm. um, it would be ideal, I think. Yeah. So just moving on to the actual sort of looking for a, a property and, and buying, um, I, I understand there's uh, that there may be sort of a nego negotiation between um, different real estate agents. So you might have a sort of seller side agent and a buyer side agent. Um, how, how does that sort of process work? I mean, if people are looking for a property, uh, should they approach the the real estate agent that um, manages that property or um, or should they go through a separate real estate agent? Mm -hmm. How does that sort of process work? Okay, so that's a very difficult question. But um, if, so there's the seller's agent and the buyer's agent, our client's agent, which will be usually us. Um, the seller's agent's um, priority, the, what they have to do is to sell the pri property as high as possible for their seller. So right. they tend to stick on the seller's demands. So it'll be difficult to, well, it's not difficult to negotiate, but if you're not very, um, if you haven't done that before, um, it'll be hard to say you want to lower the price. So in, the, in that meaning, um, the seller's, a buyer's agent can try to negotiate maybe harder or mm -hmm. show you different properties. If you go to that only, that's, um, seller's agent he will not try to show you other properties he will try to close you with the property you're just seeing today sure so better to i think better to use both i think mm. if you really like the property you might want to go like don't waste time using sometimes us sometimes using us might we might uh what would you say the seller's agent sometimes wants to take fees from both sides Right, yeah. Japan, they take 3% from the seller and 3% from the buyer. And there are agents which we really hate and they're not very professional, but they want to take both sides. So even if we say we have a client who wants a view, sometimes the agent rejects us. They say, right. oh, there's going to be a contract next week. So they kind of... um reject and they mm. keep waiting for a client to come direct to them um, sure, this is sure. actually banned in japan they cannot do that oh really okay yeah because this sell it will lose the sellers what do you say um opportunity mm. they're wasting time yeah but there are agents who are pretty arrogant and do those styles so sometimes when a client really likes a property and we try our best to um get appointment for the viewing but the seller's agent are not acting properly. We sometimes say, please go directly to the seller's agent. Okay. Because we never know what the in intentions are until the client calls directly. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, a few other things, I guess, uh, uh, some questions from, uh, from cl some clients and, and contacts. Um, uh, the property inspections, um, how do property inspections work in, in Japan? Um, both uh, if you were to, to buy a property, um, are there, the, the, I guess there's a bit of a notion that perhaps property inspections in Japan aren't as thorough as in other countries. Um, yeah. yeah, what's what's your view on that? Okay, so um, last year, um, the Japanese real estate, uh, what do you say? Um, there's this uh, organization hmm. now said that every deal, uh, when there's a deal, the agent has to announce that the client buyer can do an inspection. Okay. And they have to tell that. But before then, there was no um, culture for the buyer to do inspection. Um, I don't know why, but nobody did inspection actually. But now um, on the contract, it's written um, that you can do inspection if you want to. Um, it will be paid. The buyer has to pay um, a few mayen. Oh, really? The, okay. Yeah. The seller has to approve that. But still, the points, the uh, let's say for apartment, 
because apartments are basically most of the parts are common areas um the water pipes and everything are said to be common areas so the inspection guy cannot start opening up the building and check the common area water pipes so i feel for apartments there's not so much use to do inspection okay but for houses um in japan there are sometimes termites if it's mm. a wooden house and those inspection people will go actually under the house to see if they're termites or anything and they'll go up the what do you say like the attic under the roof yep to check if there's a, a proper clearance there needs to be clearance on the roof and the bottom um, from the ground mm. they'll check those parts so i think um you will feel a little bit safer to have an inspection but still not so many people does the inspection japanese really? people don't have the culture to do that yeah yeah is that just because it's sort of i guess you meant to trust that the seller and the seller side agent would um would disclose any things that um that, that may impact uh, the, the the buyer's buying yeah. Uh, yeah so um when the seller is a real estate agent they have to be responsible for two years if they're like water leaks or rain leaking from the roof or if they're termites um the seller the real estate agent if it's a company they have to be responsible even if mm. it was an individual person they usually it's two two months or three months they have to be responsible and there's this sheet they have to disclose if there were water leaks in the past or if they did some renovation if they had any termite pro problems mm. um the seller always has to write that down and i think japanese people tend to do that properly I've never seen someone like um say a false thing so sure maybe it comes from there yeah mm -hmm. and if people are going ahead with the building inspection um apart from the termites what are some other key things that you want to make sure that your inspector is is looking for sometimes um well we had once the floor was not balanced it was tilted a bit um they'll check that yep um i think windows and entrance doors because japan has earthquakes sometimes it's a bit tilted and it's difficult to open okay and entrance doors especially um they'll check that um for wooden house they'll check the uh what to say the largest pillar um if it's stable enough yeah. those parts the inspection people will check yeah okay. but if it only takes maybe 45 minutes for one person to check so it's not that thorough sure mm. sure okay um he's moving on now uh, perhaps uh, the other option that people may consider and as you know we we did this um buying a plot of land and building a house um what would you recommend into is that something you would recommend um i know <laughs> I would recommend it. I, we've had a great experience with it, but um, yeah, what are your views on on buying land and building in Japan? And uh, and for those people that may be thinking about doing that, um, what are some things that they need to consider? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think it's if the buyer has a good um, can make an image of what they want. Mm. Um, it's better to build their own house, definitely, because they can picture your image in your brains and you can show, tell that to the architect guy mm. but not so many people actually can do that they sometimes really want to see the house before they buy right um building a house on your own it means that you cannot see the actual atmosphere or the level of the height and the quality of the house before it's done before you've already paid so um I think one one point should be if they can image something I would definitely would like to buy a land and build a house that I like the floor plans layout everything yeah so I would recommend that yeah okay yeah. but the good uh, thing about a uh, built house is that you can actually see you can see how the wind blows in and things like that yeah, yeah. okay um <sighs> And for someone who is buying a, a plot of land, what uh, what sort of things should they they consider in terms of you know, the direction that the land faces, um, the, the uh, I guess zoning of the uh, the neighbourhood where the land is, things like that. Mm, well, south facing is 
every Japanese people like. So mm -hmm. when you sell the house, um, it will be a bit higher. Um, the selling price will be higher if it's south facing yeah. to the road. And in Japan, we say it's a hatachi. It's like a, um, the land shape looks like a flag. So every, every house needs to be um, two meters um, attached to the road. So it, has, it needs two meter access to the road. So can you see this? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So th this land is always expensive than this land, even if the um, size is same. So the land on the back side, well, this side is the road. Yeah. There's a two meter access to this la land. So the house will be built over here. Um, this land will be a bit cheaper than the land in front of the actual road. This yeah, house has a better yeah. light, light accessible is, is better. Yeah. Okay. So if, if you need to reduce your purchase price, better find a property like this. Mm. Um, yeah, we'll make, give you maybe 10 to 50% lower. Sure. The land price should be lower. Right. Okay. So um, we've got both a visual version and, a, and just an audio version of the podcast. So for oh, okay, those sorry. listening, no, that's no, that's uh, no, that <laughs> was really helpful. No, that's okay. Um, but yeah, basically, what Ken's saying is, um, if you have uh, one sort of space, almost like a rectangle, um, you you can have two properties on that, um, but the one at the front will be will be uh, a greater value. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. that's great. Um, and then depending on where you buy and um, uh, and the position of the land, whether it's on a corner or not, um, there are different um, percentages of that land on which you can actually build. And that's usually between 50 and 70%. Is that correct? Yes, in a residential area. Yes. In a residential area. Yeah. 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 Um, and so that's obviously important to take into consideration if you want to build a... Um, uh, let's say you buy a hundred square meter block of land and uh, you want to build a um, you know, 140 square meter house, then if, if you can only build on 60% of that, then that's going to be 60, um, 60 square meter footprint. And then you have to consider how high you can build. Um, yeah. And obviously, depending on where you are, that may be a two story restriction, or you may be able to build to three stories. Um, and, and also there's a, a shading rule too. So depending on the direction uh depending on the, the neighborhood and also the direction of, of which the land is facing um that'll sort of dictate how much you can build on that second or third floor is, is that uh basically correct yes. yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah um and i know sort of just our personal experience um we were lucky enough to find a, a block of land where um they had very liberal shading um restrictions so because of the, the direction that our, our property faces um we were actually able to build um quite a, a large proportion on the third floor compared to uh to other properties so um yeah just from personal experience yep. that's uh mm -hmm. that's something to, to take into consideration and will that affect the value of the land as well so if you say again, have a hundred square meter block of land, um, would a block of land where you can build uh, on 70% be valued higher than 60%? Yes. Yeah, it will, just because it's, you can, yeah. Yeah, it's always, um, it would always go higher if you can build a bigger house or yeah. a building, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and are those sort of restrictions, will that, do they ever change over time, depending on how the neighborhood changes like um it, it does not change it does not change yeah. yeah never changed never changed yeah okay um and is there are there any other factors um with the the land that should, people should consider if they're looking at buying land okay um as i said the land has to be attached to two meters to the road yep. so when you search internet some sometimes there are lands that that looks very very cheap um then you should be aware that the land should not have access to uh, the main road, which means that um, if there's a house there, you cannot rebuild the house in the future. Uh, okay. So you have to reform the house if you want to, but you cannot rebuild, you cannot knock it down. But there are many houses in Japan that has no access to the road, a very old ones. So, don't well an agent will definitely tell you that this is a like illegal construction house but right. um i would like you to be aware of that those properties 
Yeah. And I think it, yeah, just access to the property is important as well. I know one property that we were looking at was uh, a lot cheaper than others, but um, the road to get into it was so narrow that we couldn't oh. actually, unless you have a very narrow car, mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't actually be able to, to access the property. So yeah. Yeah, I think things mm -hmm. like that are very important as well. Oh yeah. Well, one, one other thing, um, mm. there's this um, unique website called Oshima Teru. Okay. It's, yep. Um, in Japan, so, people do not like to buy a house where there was like somebody committed suicide or mm. um, there was fire in the past. Mm. Um, there's, there's only Oshima Teru that tells this, um, what do you say, incident that had in the past. So, okay. So uh, the real estate yeah. agents don't have to tell you that, or, or are probably not no, going no. to tell you. That. Uh, we always have to tell you that. Yep. But, um, what, what should I say? Um, if if it was, sometimes we really don't know if there was a um, like a murder in that property or not. Let's mm. say if it was an apartment, there's so many units. The seller's agent does not have to tell us if there was a, some incident in room 101, okay. but the deal we're doing is at 401, then the seller's agent will never tell us. Mm. But because of that website, um, some people, when they resell, it will be hard for the, to find the next buyer. Okay. So we always try to check that website. Yeah, interesting. Before purchase, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I guess moving on now to uh, investment properties. Um, for those people that, uh, again, more long-term residents here, um, is investing in property, uh, not, not for residential use, but uh, as an investment um, in Japan, something that you would recommend? Um, I should say yes. Um, I feel it's very, very stable. There won't mm. be like a disaster won't happen. Like, owning a property i've never mm -hmm. had an owner have have bad days um owning yeah. a property so it should be very very stable investment yeah, yeah yeah um and what sort of property um do you think is, is best for investing in is it uh, apartments um houses you talked uh, before about how you purchased a, a small apartment building um what, what are sort of the best in investments in terms of property in tokyo um this is very difficult it's <laughs> like um what your type is so sure. some some people like an old like a wooden apartment it looks very it's not good looking it's an old japanese type of wooden apartment there's like eight units but the yield is super high maybe seven eight percent even in tokyo if you go really? a little bit out it's like ten, nearly ten percent Mm. But if that becomes uh, like a RC, reinforced concrete building, it's suddenly it's half the yield. Right. So it's what you actually want and your exit plan, how long you would like to hold it and in what, which timing you would like to sell or how, how far you want to go on doing real estate investment, how many mm. units you want to expand. Mm. That kind of changes um, the starting point. Let's say you really want to expand. Maybe it would be better to buy a whole building with the land first. Right. That will give the, if you want to buy a next one, the bank will see you, um, see that history that you've been doing. And then it would be easier for them to lend you mm. the second house. But um, if you start from like small units, yep, that would be hard for the bank to lend you next for a bigger building mm. unless your income has really gone higher sure sure so i think it's all about um what kind of apartment you actually like yeah and the future plan sure but to start with i would say if it's in japan um stick close to tokyo and if it's an apartment it'll be really easy to rent out mm. even if it's old like 40 years old 50 years old i don't mind if it's near our office like ebisu Everybody yep. will be like looking out for apartment, even if it's old. Yeah. Um, that might be a good starting point mm. just mm. to have the experience of renting a place. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, and what, uh, what sort of yields would you be estimating? Say if we're taking a, an apartment in a central place like Ebisu, um, what sort of thing could you, would okay. you in Ebisu, a new, newly built, built, newly built building, maybe will be like 2% or something. Right. Okay. Yeah. If it's old, maybe five. Yeah. If it's good, 6%. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think, yeah. Um, and in terms of uh, getting loans for investment properties in Japan, um, uh, how does that process uh, compare to uh, getting loans for a residential property here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there was um, some kind of, uh, sorry, my English isn't good. Um, there was this bank named Suruga Bank. They yes. were doing some shady things and yes. Two years, two or three years ago, the FSA, Japanese FSA, started to rethink of how the um, how to loan, how the bank should loan, and now it's getting pretty tough to get a uh, investment property loan. But um, if you have ten percent or twenty percent um, down payment to buy a property, and if you have a stable job, and if you have PR, um, the bank should be uh, very um, willing to lend um, money. Yeah. But the bank will see how stable your job is. And that's very, very um, important in Japan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and the interest rates, um, you know, typically for a residential property um, these days is, you know, de definitely under 1%. Um, yeah. I know we, we got about uh, 0 0.68 on mm -hmm. our loan with Prestia. Um, what sort of interest rates would you be looking at for an investment property? Um, maybe nowadays it's 2 to 3%. Mm. Even that Suliga Bank has lowered the interest rate. Now it's 2 point something for investment loan. Back then it was 4 or 5%. So they right. lowered it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And if you can show the bank that you have assets, like you have cash in your account and you have a stable job, they will even lower bit um, lower than 2%. Okay. They will lend. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you mentioned Suruga. I mean, <laughs> I haven't uh, got the, the best, best reputation, but uh, in terms of uh, lending for investment property, is that uh, an institution that you would recommend or are there other banks that you think do the investment property loans a bit better? Or um, So each bank has different um, strengths. I think like let's say Oryx Bank, um, we some, sometimes use them. They like the newly built apartment, wooden apartments. They actually give 30 years, which is a very, very long term um, loan for investment. Yeah. And um, if your profile is good, they give like 2.1%, which I think is very, very nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, Suluga Bank, I recently talked with, um, they also do um, close to 2%, 2 to 3%. Okay. And um, they fairly like the reinforced concrete type, the whole building type. Mm. Um, other than that, every local banks, um, like Yokohama Ginko yep. or, or Chiba Bank, those mm -hmm. banks um, appreciate investment uh, to lend investment um, loans to. Mm. But you need some kind of access. Your building has to be in like Kanagawa or has your okay. house has to be near to that um, branch. Sure. So, mm. Mm. okay. And then what about um, some of the, I guess, more foreign friendly banks like uh, Prestia? Um, I know a lot of people get their um, residential loans through them. How, how are they with, uh, have you had any experience with them in terms um, of investment? Actually, properties? I haven't dealt with Prestia for investment loans. So, yeah. Okay. yeah not mm. much, yeah. Um, and I guess uh, just going back to loans, um, not just for investment properties, but in general, um, I guess one thing that's a little bit different is that um, in, uh, in Australia, for example, you might have a loan that's uh, interest only. Um, I understand in Japan, they, they don't offer those interest only loans. Is that, uh, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, I, I think that's probably a, a good thing, but um, 
uh, is there any specific reason, you know, has that always been the case that they haven't offered that or um, has that been a change in regulation? Um, no, I've never heard of that actually. Oh, really? Even okay. for business loan, I haven't yeah. heard that kind of loans. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, and then just going back to investment properties, um, there's uh, it seems to be within the foreign community a bit of a thing of buying um, sort of holiday um, properties, uh, sort of the second home, whether it's in, in Chiba or you know, Shimoda or in one of the, um, mm -hmm. uh, the ski fields. Um, what are your thoughts on those uh, investment properties? Mm, but it's investment, but you're going to use it. You're going maybe. to use it, yeah. Yeah, so I think the starting point will be a place you would like to use in the weekends. Yep. And in the, in the future, you might want to rent it out. Yep. Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have several friends um, who has bought in like Onjuku or like in the Chiba area or yep. some, sometimes Kamakura. Yep. Um, I think the yield will, in Kamakura, the yield will be pretty decent, I think. And okay. they, if you rent it out, there always will be people who, will, who are willing to um, borrow that place in the future. Mm. But other than that, maybe there might be some difficulties in renting out. Like summertime might be okay, but the winter times maybe no. Mm. So it has to be a place you really would like to use for yourself. If yeah. it's a, what, is, what did you say? Va uh, like, a, like a vacation sort vac of home. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, and, and any other sort of tips on, I guess, places that uh, may be more likely to lose value or any other, I guess, a warning, warning uh, things that people should take note of when, when looking at purchasing those sort of pro properties? Okay. One, one difficulty will be, it will be hard to use a housing loan to purchase a property because you won't be able to commute. But if you can sure. make up a story that your whole family will be moving to any, any place that you're going yep. to buy. And if, if the bank finds the reason that it will be your home, um, they can use, you can use home loan. But other than that, it might be hard to even get an investment loan. Mm. Oh, sorry, there is one a second house loan that most of the banks um, has. Okay. So you might be able to use that. Yeah. yeah. How, how does that second house loan work? Um, it's basically like the way, the way they screen, do the screening is same as housing loans. And the interest rates are similar to housing loans. So actually they're very, very cheap. Okay. Yeah. So most of the yeah. mega banks do have housing loans. They do, yeah. No. And do they have to be within a certain um, distance from your, your current residence or, or company or? Um, so, yeah, you, we always need a, a story. We, it, it can be make up, made up, but yep. some story that fits the plan for a second house loan. Yeah. Uh, like somebody's wife wants to buy a house where it's, easier for the children to go to school yep. or like near to parents' house or something. Yep. Yeah. 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 We can make up a story like that. It'll, it'll be okay. Yeah. And then um, I'm just sort of th thinking uh, if you were to, so the, the uh, interest rate on um, a second home loan would be less than an investment property loan. Um, could you potentially, and this is probably something, something that you should do, but um, potentially buy a property on uh, that second home loan and then uh, rent it out in, as an investment property? Is that something yeah, that people so, do? Yeah. Um, as a result, I cannot say that you can do it right away, but as a result, you buy the property yep. and you, you or your wife starts to live there and they don't like the neighborhood. So they have nothing, they have no way to like, other than to rent out, then renting out should be one solution. Mm. So, and those things do happen. Yeah. 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 Okay. Very, very well answered. <laughs> um, terrific. All right. Well, I think that sort of covered most of the things that uh, I wanted to talk about. Um, is there anything else that you think that people listening um, should know if they're, they're looking at buying property here? 
、なんだろう。<笑><笑>私はそのうちの人生は、Ask you to write several different bank applications, but、mm. those applications, all those history will be listed in the bank. So I would feel that just talk to an agent and not、mm. write the screening paper, but ask the agent to talk with the bank,、okay. show all the documents the client has,、mm. and not write the paper until the agent feels that they're like 80% sure they can go. Sure, sure. No, that's, that's, that's really good advice. Yeah. And another thing, sorry,、um, the Japanese bank checks your credit history, and you can check that um, by um, using internet. It's CIC.、Okay. You can type CIC, and then you can see your own credit history in Japan.、Mm. Um, let's say there was some point that you forgot to pay your mobile phone. In Japan, the mobile phone is most cases like split payment. So, like two months, you went back to your home country and you forgot to pay. That will be recorded.、And、right. Yeah. If we figure that out, we'll never ask you to do the screening because it will lose one of the bank you, you are able to use in the future. Okay. After two years, most of the cases you'll be all clear. So,、right. it's better to wait for like two years rather、okay. than do screening. So, those two things I think would be good to know. Okay. Right. So, yeah, if you're looking at buying property, make sure you,、uh, you keep up to date with your phone bill payments. <laughs> All right.、Um, so,、uh, if people are interested in、um, using your services to,、uh, to find some property, how can they get in touch with you?、Um, maybe email? Yep. Or, yeah. Sure.、Um, I'll, I'll, and that's, that's great. I'll, I'll add your、um, email address to the show notes. And、um, does、okay. High Ground have a, a website?、Um, um, yes, we do.、Mm-hmm. Yep. It's、okay. Japanese, but we do have a website. Okay, terrific. <laughs>、um, and、uh, did you have any social media pre- presence at all? Oh,、uh, yeah, we have,、um, yes, Facebook. Okay. We don't update that often, but I'll, sh- I'll send the Facebook to your email. Terrific. Yeah. Great.、Mm. Um, and you mentioned your website is in Japanese,、um, but you, you do have、uh, several、uh, bilingual agents. Oh, yes, or, yes. we do. Okay.、Mm-hmm. All right. Well,、um, yeah, I mean, in terms of、uh, our family's experience, we've,、uh, we've bought、uh, two properties and sold one through you, and、um, you've been extremely helpful in.、Uh, In helping us、uh, along with that journey. So, we really appreciate that. And、uh, yeah, we really appreciate you coming on today and, and sharing your knowledge and experience. And、uh, if there's any、uh, listeners who have any further、uh, questions for Ken,、um, feel free to, to email in and、um, we might even get him, as, as, the, as stated at the top of the show, we might even get him in、uh, again in the future to discuss sort of the rental、uh, side of, of、uh, the real estate industry in Japan. So, Thanks again, Ken.、Um, okay, and, thank you very、uh, much. Yeah, have a great day. Yeah, you too. Arigatou gozaimasu. All right, take care. All right.、Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.